They want to vote know about k after it's it's transformed. So you got to find the coordinates of k, transform them, and then match them up here with the uh, with the right answer. So let me uh, just get the out of the way here. So why don't you try that and uh, see what you come up with? All right. Uh, I got six two. That's the coordinates. Take a look here. That looks to be correct. All right, good job. Next one here is um, all right. Triangle PAT has been reflected over the x-axis. So we don't know where it is, but we know that this is the x-axis. So here, here's a triangle. And I reflect it over the x-axis, it looks like this. And, and let's just call this P and this P prime. What, uh, what can you say about the line connecting P to P prime here? Which, are there any of these that are, that look good to you? Um, perpendicular yeah i would agree um the the they are perpendicular the the x axis and the line are perpendicular they meet the 90 degrees good right next one here um which of the following would be a line of reflection that would map it onto itself? So the line has to basically cut through the figure, either either on a diagonal, diagonal, vertical, or horizontal. Any of those would map the shape onto itself. Now, do you remember any of these equations of a line from previous classes? Um, no, not really. Not really. Okay. So x equals one is a vertical line. That's through one. So that means that means x is always one. So that oh. like that means straight up and down. So that cannot be the answer because it doesn't cut right through the middle of it. it has to cut right through the middle of it. All right, so to do the other ones here, I'm going to need to uh, grab the picture again and uh, kind of reset here on this. Right. So the uh, we know that the first one is out. To graph a line, there's a couple of ways to do it, but the best way is probably to solve for y. Do you remember how to solve for y in this in the second one here? Um. Not sure. Okay, so on the side with y, there's a negative x. You add x to both sides. Y equals x plus plus two. Oh. All right, All right. now if you recall, that's that's in the form y equals mx plus b. Y equals one x plus two. What is m and what is b? Um. M is one X and B is it's two. only a number. M is just the number. Oh, okay. B is, two. B is the other number. Two. Two. So to graph this, you start at B value, which is, I'll do that in red here. You start at two, that's the B value. Now the slope of one really means one over one, rise of run, run of one. And so it looks like, looks like this. So does that work? Does that map notes onto itself? Um, looks like it. Yeah, it does. So that looks to be the uh, the correct answer there. Now, hang on. The second one also. Oh, that's right. It's going to become negative two. All right. Yeah. So that that does it. That's uh, 
All right. Any, uh, any more thoughts on that? Questions? Uh, I did have one question. Yep. Like the dots where you put them, it doesn't matter as long as there's like a line going through, right? Well, it's, 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 you're going up one, rise and then run, rise and then run. So the dots do matter. Like when you're graphing MX plus B form, you, you start with the B value and then use the slope to go up and to the right. Oh, all or right. Down, or down and to the right, depending, depending on it. Um, that's, that's your algebra one. Uh, you'll see it again in algebra two, but you're, you're just, they're, they only, they only incorporate a tiny little bit of algebra into this course, but it's, 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 yeah, it's significant. Um, it's significant when you don't know, I guess it's like, ah, what do I do? Um, all right. So let's look at the next one here. All right, figure E, F, G, H represent a trapezoid plate at starting position on a rotating platform. Plate is rotated 360 degrees about the origin in the counterclockwise direction. Which of the following is formed when the arcs of rotation are drawn from each point it is rotated? So they're, they're trying to say, let's make a really simple example. Let's say, let's say you have a dot draw the origin like that and you you rotate it around the circle around the origin what does that form what shape does that look like a circle circle and then if i have another piece of it and i do the same thing and then maybe the other the other part is over here what kind of shapes am i am i drawing Circles, concentric circles. So, which answer would that be? The first one. Okay. Ben performed a transformation on trapezoid PQRS to create P prime, Q prime, R prime, as, as shown. Which transformation did Ben create? It's basically asking, how did you go from the one on the left to the one on the right? And there's two options. You're either going, well, there's not two options. You're you're either you're either uh, what's the right word? Um, shifting, uh, translating. Sorry, translating, which is Shifting, you're reflecting, or you're rotating. So out of these three, which one seems most reasonable? Are you translating, which is like the D-pad, left, right, up, down. Reflecting is like a mirror. Rotating is going in some direction. Looks like it's rotating. I would agree. So that gets you down to those right there. So there, there's there are two different types of rotations. There's clockwise. So we used to have, all have to learn how to use a, an old analog clock. That's clockwise. Or if you go the other direction, that's counterclockwise. And and there's some there's some there's some overlap uh, between them. Let me uh, pull up the uh, reference here so you can see that. Let me snip this in. All right, so the uh, the idea here is that a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation is the same as a 270 degree clockwise rotation. If you want some explanation on that, I could try to try to show you that. Mm. No, I think I got it. It's like same with same with 270 counterclockwise, the same as 90 uh, clockwise. Okay, so you you have to go back here and decide. Well, is it 270? counterclockwise or is it 90 degrees counterclockwise which which one is it um i'd say 270 counter so 270 counterclockwise uh would get you if you're going against the clock so the clock normally goes you no know, goes to the right so you'd be coming back here 
and going right there. And that would be it. Yeah. Yeah, because if you're going uh, 90, you'd just be in the top left. Yeah. A lot that goes into answering that. I mean, okay. So the question, the question about uh, number six that I want you to think about is when you is when you uh, rotate an a triangle. Because that's what's heard. It says trapezoid, but it doesn't really matter actually. Um, if you rotate trapezoid, does the angle change? Do those angles change when you rotate it, the measure of them? No. They do not. So if they give you angle B, when you're asking about the rotated angle, what do you know about the angle measure? It's 20. It's 20. So there you go. Okay. Um, next one here. Oh, boy, it went the wrong. Okay, there's that one. We just did that one. All right, here's another one. All right, triangle STU, triangle HIJ. I always just draw these generically without trying to put a lot of effort into figuring out, well, you know, which is which. The order matters. So it's S to T to U. So then for the other one, it's H to I to J. And you have to decide which are congruent. Oh. So go through the list there and see if any of them stand out to you. Angles are usually the easiest ones to start with. And then if the angles don't work, go to the line oh. segments. Yeah, go to the, yeah. usually uh, the angles use it because they're single letter. I'd say the bottom one. So what what does that say there? U to S. So that's this one down here is U to S here into J to H. It looks like it. All right. Um, let's look at number eight. Okay. So the uh, Again, probably good to draw two generic triangles here again. H, I, J, that's the, that's the one here on the right. Triangle K, L, M. So side angle side. So it says if angle I is 20 degrees, and I'm just filling in the information, H to I is five and angle L is 20 degrees, okay? And side K, L is five. What additional information would you need to prove that the triangle is congruent by SAS? So you should see right now that we have a side and an angle, but not another side. A side and an angle, but not another side. So you're looking for the answer here where it tells you that the other side here can go into the other side. Uh, the third one. IJ congruent to, to LM. Yeah. All right, uh, let's look at the next one here. Sorry, I'm fading a little bit here. I'm gonna have to go heat up some coffee. <laughs> uh, do you do coffee, drink coffee? 
Yeah, most of the time. Wow, I didn't have any coffee until I was in my 20s. Now, wow. now I'm older than that, and I still drink coffee. So I don't know. Take a look at this, or just wait till I get back. But I need to, I do need to reheat here to make the momentum for the rest of this. So I'll be be right back with you. All right. All right, I am back. Let me know when you're there. Uh, I'm here. Okay. All right, a land server places two stakes 500 feet apart. Oops. Point, uh, point A, point B, 500 feet. He locates the midpoint between the two stakes and creates a perpendicular to that line that connects the two stakes. He needs to place, so, so that it's right in the middle there, and that means it's 250 and 250. He needs to place a third stake 100 feet away from this perpendicular line. So there's the perpendicular. He wants to put it 100 feet away. It's a little bit vague, but I think... I don't really know where they think the stake. I don't really know where the third stake goes. It says 100 feet away from the perpendicular. I mean, it could be really anywhere along this dashed line or this dashed line because they're all 100 feet away. Yeah. I don't know. You, you could read it and tell me what you think. Um, it's not exactly like this, but, you know, you, when you video games I used to play, they'd tell you the proximity of the enemy and, and you, know, you kind of get an idea, but you didn't know where they were. You just knew they were 100 feet away. And it's not a perfect analogy, but um, what do you think here? What's your intuition telling you? I'm not sure. Well, I think it's well, the first one of the first two answers because it's talking about the third state. Okay. Um, okay. So a location of the third stake is closer to one of the two original stakes, but it's it's not. I mean, it's it's there's two fifty here, and it's a hundred away, so that means this is a hundred and fifty. I'm not sure that it's 
and it's closer to one of the two original stakes. Yeah, that would help because you don't know which side it is. I mean, I guess that second one says that because uh, you don't know which side it is. Maybe go with that one and uh, we'll uh, find out in a bit how we did. All right. So that's nine. I don't have a 10 in the chat. Uh, you know, I don't know if you want to send off some more pictures or maybe yeah. that is it. Uh, no, I was just trying to send us like as many as I could before we started, but there's some more. What kind of coffee do you drink? Just a, a blend of uh, decaf and regular of uh whatever there was on sale at the store uh, <laughs> yeah it all i never drink at all and no reason to overspend but <clears throat> all right oh boy all right c is the circumcenter of the isosceles triangle a b d with vertex angle a e b does the following proof correctly justify the triangles A, B, E, and B, B, E are congruent? So we're talking about these two triangles right here, A, B, E, and B, B, E, right here, those big ones. like that so let's look at the answers if it's correct or is there an error there's an error there's an error so we've got to figure out where the error is so in line one it is given that triangle abc abd abd is an isosceles triangle the segments ab and bb are congruent by the definition of isosceles triangles that's true if you have if it's if it says it's an isosceles triangle then the uh, sides are the same so that that one is out that make is that okay? Yeah. Two, it is given that C is the circumcenter of triangle ABD, making segment BE a median. So uh I need to look that one up. I actually don't know if that's what that refers to. So let me do that real quick here. Uh so I'm looking up definition of a circumcenter. Center isosceles triangle. Is the points for the perpendicular bisector? Uh, so is it a median? I think the way I read this, and I'll I'll, I'll snip this in here, um, is I don't read it that it's a uh, it's a median. I read it as the circumcenter of a triangle is defined as the point where the perpendicular bisectors the sides of that particular triangle intersect. In other words, the point of concurrency is the bisector of the sides of a triangle called the circumcenter. Like to me, it looks like it's the perpendicular bisector, not the median. Oh, there it is. So it says line two, they, they say it's a median, but it's actually a perpendicular bisector. So there is your, uh, there is your answer. All right. Let's take a look here. Um, Okay, so because these lines are parallel, and this is called a transversal, if this is 75, this is also 75. Yeah, can you um, kind of extrapolate from what I've drawn here about that? Um, let's see. 
So, like, the angle R is going to be 75, too? Well, you got to be careful there, because angle R, does that refer to the one on the right or the one on the left? So it's better to use three letters for angle R. The one on the left, it looks like. Well, yes, but you, you have to use three letters. So what three letters make up angle, angle R? Uh, Q, P, and R? So Q, P, R, the middle letter is the vertex. Is that, is that the angle in question? Q, no. If, no. So it's got it. So R has to be the middle letter. So like P, R, Q refers to that angle right there. So does uh, Q, R, P. Oh, okay. No, I, I see what you mean. Okay, so, so it, like, even though I know what you're talking about, you have to be more specific in the class. All right, so the, uh, this angle is 75. What about the other angle in the triangle? What, what, does, what does that become? 75. Well, it's got a different, it's got a different transversal this time. 35 here becomes 35 down here. That's the alternate interior angles. Oh. This angle measures 35. Yeah. So which of these, which of these is correct? Which of these, and now you know, okay, the middle letter tells you where the vertex is. Which of these is then correct? Uh. Thirty-five. So angle PRQ measures thirty-five. Is that what you're saying? All right. No, PRQ is seventy-five. Okay. PQR is thirty-five. But okay. So which uh, which is the right answer here? Seventy-five. Yes, PRQ is seventy-five. All right. Good job on that. Any uh, any other questions here for me on this one? Uh, I just need coffee too, I guess. So just a moment here, I gotta block something off of my schedule. That knocked out. Okay, there it is. All right. All right, so Jeremiah is working on a model bridge. He needs to create triangular components and he plans to use toothpicks. He finds three toothpicks of lengths four, five, and one inches. Will he be able to create the triangular component with these toothpicks without modifying any of the length? Okay. The, um, we talked about this yesterday, I think. It's it's like if this is four and this is one, can you make um, can you make this work? So the, the way the triangle inequality theorem works is that the two sides have to always be greater than the third side. So if you have three sides A, B, C, A plus B has to be greater than C, B plus C has to be greater than A, A plus C has to be greater than B. And you can think of it as A, B, and C. So you have to decide if, if those are all true or not. Oh. Uh. Yeah, I'll work. Is what you're saying? Is that is that what you're saying? Or, yeah. Okay. So let's let's go through the numbers. Is to make sure. So is four plus five greater than one? Yeah. Okay. Is four plus one greater than five? They're equal. They're equal. 
that doesn't mean it's greater, so it fails. So no. So they have to all work. It's like an all or nothing thing. So would it be the third one? Yes. At least that's my best sort of guess here. All right. The uh, uh, yeah. Where is it at? All right, new uh, new problem here coming up. How many have we got here? Uh, the twenty total? Uh, no, just fifteen. Just fifteen. So like, okay. So like three more left. All right. So it says, uh, "What conclusion we made for C and E?" So some things we can add in here. This is four. This is four. Like that. Um. So we actually know that these triangles are congruent by side, 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 because 2.5 is the same as 2.5, four is the same as four, and the other four is the same as the other four. So these are congruent by side, side, side. All right. Okay, and then uh, what does that tell you about the angles here, E and C? Uh, they're the same. They're the same. So let's see if there's one here that says that. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry. They're, they, I, I apologize. I totally messed up here. This is 2.8, not 2.5. Um, so they are not the same. So that is not enough here. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. All right. So, uh, oh, that's a major fail there. The, uh, there's this other thing that happens in triangles, which is that the larger side is across from the larger angle. The smaller side is across from the smaller angle. All right. So that means that angle C is bigger than angle E or angle E is smaller than angle, angle C. So which, which says that down here? Um. Uh, the first one? Yes. Proof here. Yet another proof. All right. Um, okay. Um, what going on here? Claire's proof for its spelling proof for the theorem if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So what she's saying is that is that uh, if you draw a first diagonal and then you draw a second diagonal, and then these bisect each other. Bisecting means they cut them in half. Then it's a quadrilateral. It's one of those properties. So. Um, I'm not sure where they're going with this, but they they start with okay triangles A O B, A O B. So this top triangle, angle one is congruent to angle two in the bottom triangle. Okay, vertical angles. So it looks like they're proving triangles are congruent. They're saying that uh, this angle is congruent to this angle, and then A O. This one right here is congruent to O C, and then B O. It old body odor is congruent to uh, OD, like that. So the triangles are congruent by SAS. So the, you got a side, an angle and a side, side and angle and a side. So once the triangles are proven congruent, you always, always, always use this right here. This is always what follows from triangles are congruent. All right. So that's kind of your, your hint about what the answer is. The CPCTC is always used after you prove the triangles are congruent. Oh, so 
CPCTC. Yeah, and what that stands for is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, which is a tongue twister mouthful, right? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All it means is that once you prove the triangles are congruent, you can very easily say like, okay, that angle is congruent to that angle or that angle or that side is congruent to that side. Hmm. All right. Questions on that? Oh, no. Okay. Let's see if we I'm can good. make it through here. All right. Uh, next one on the list here. All right. So this is a rhombus. B A E B to A to E. So this angle right here is 9x plus 2. B to A to D is 130. 30 degrees solve for x. I'm sorry, the whole thing, sorry, the whole thing is 130 degrees. So this whole right here is 130 degrees. Um, what is it that allows that to be okay? So it must be Let me let me look here because I don't remember what the this 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 angle in the rhombus here. I don't know if that's if that's uh, if they're congruent. That's kind of the direction I'm going. So let's see here. We can actually figure this out without looking this up. So tri the triangle on the top, the triangle on the bottom. Okay, in a rhombus, all the sides are the same. The diagonals also bisect each other. And then this this third one here is congruent to itself. So they are congruent by side, 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 which means that 9x plus 2 plus 9x plus 2, the two angles equal 1, 130. Oh, so I have to solve that now? Yeah, go, why don't you go solve that now, and we'll see uh, see what you come up with. All right. I got seven. All right, let's go with it. Right, any uh, questions for me on that? Uh, no. Got a hundred. All right. Okay, so let's do a let's do a little bit more here. Uh, maybe we'll stop a few minutes early. Why don't you? Drop over a few more questions. All right. All right. Just that one over. We sent a couple over, okay. All right, just making sure. Okay, so back, maybe a little review of lines, not sure. Um, says DF is dilated from the origin to create O, 
so that the new point B is at zero six. F is 4.5 comma three, what was the scale factor? Okay. So give me the uh, the old point for D. What's the what's the coordinates for D? Um zero four. Zero four. And it goes to it goes to zero comma six. Give me the old coordinates for F, please. Uh three, two. And the new coordinates are four point five, comma three. So what you're trying to figure out is is what do you multiply zero to get to zero, which would be a lot of things, or what do you multiply four to get to six? Like, how do you go from four to six, but you're multiplying this time? So it's really an equation. It's like four times K equals six. Do you remember how to solve something like that? No. So you divide both sides by four. K equals, what is six divided by four? Uh, let me check. Wait, four, oh, six divided by four? Yeah. Uh, 1.5. 1.5. Now, what you're hoping is, is does that work for the other one? Three times 1.5, 4.5. Uh, yeah. Okay, now does the same thing for two. Is two times 1.5 equal to three? Yeah. So that is your scale factor. Any questions on that? Nope. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. Trapezoid trap was dilated by a scale factor of one half to create trapezoid P prime, R prime, A prime, P prime. So what that means is it went from larger to smaller because the scale factor K is less than one. All right. Now they're asking what the center of dilation was and the thing that the, the hard part it's hard for me to just give you the answer because but it's it's um you have to look at symmetries let me say i guess maybe that will help here so is there is there a line that sort of cuts them in half uh the x yeah there's a that there's a line that goes through x that cuts them in half that would probably be the correct answer there Is that okay? Yeah. All right. All right. This will be our, uh, we'll do this one. This will be our last question for today. All right. Uh, Jesse considered two similar televisions at a local electronic store, generic version with Bates on a brand that was three fourths the size of the brand name. The generic television set is 24 by 42. What are the dimensions of the brand name television? So you got to convert this, the second sentence into a, an equation. So the, the generic version was based on the brand name and was three fourths the size of the brand name. So the generic is or equals three fourths the brand name. Okay. And so said another way, the brand name is four thirds times the generic. All right. So are they giving you the generic or the brand name? Uh, generic. Generic. So you have to take these 24 and 42 and multiply by 4 thirds. All right. I'm not sure how to do that on my calculator. So you multiply four times 24 and then divide by three, four times 42 and then divide by, by three. All right, thank you. Um, okay, so it'd be 32 inches by 56 inches. 
Okay, is that one of the answers? Yeah. All right, well, there you got it. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stop here. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and stop the recording.